Hi everyone, my name is Hussain and in this video we are going to talk about the bulkhead pattern. Bulkhead pattern lies under the reliability category of cloud design patterns. As we are going to see through this video, this pattern contributes a lot in improving the reliability of your solution. As the definition says, it's going to isolate different application components or elements and put them into isolated pools. So if one component or pool has failed, others will continue to function as usual. It's good to mention other related patterns to the bulkhead pattern. Related patterns are circuit breaker pattern, retry pattern, and throttling pattern. And in most cases, you will find yourself need to implement some of these patterns in your bulkhead pattern implementation. Now let's see from where the bulkhead name comes from. And it came from ship building. Ships are not one big unit, as you may see from the outside. What's actually going on on the inside is that they build the ships based on different sections, and they called it bulks. In the old days, when one of these bulks gets compromised or filled with water, water is going to leak to other bulks of the ship ending up sending the whole ship to the deep water. Then a solution has been introduced to build a stronger barriers between the bulks, and they called it bulk heads. So if one of our bulks gets compromised or filled with water, the water is not gonna be leaking to other bulks, and the ship can continue its journey. Bulk head is still in use in maritime, in building ships, navy, submarines, and we are using the same concept to make sure if one of our services got compromised, it won't affect the full solution. Now let's get to the scenarios and see how can we implement this. Let's say we have three services, service A, service B, and service C. And some clients are sending requests to service C. And in order for service C to perform the client requests, Service C has to call Service B to get some data, and similarly, Service B has to call Service A to get some data as well. Now let's assume that Service A has got compromised or become unavailable. Now we know for sure that Service A will not be able to perform its function, and we are going to lose the part of data that Service A was supposed to get. But someone might say, as we are implementing service-oriented architecture and we have our solution built in different services, we should be fine. We have only one service down, but other services are up and running. But unfortunately, this is not the case. Because service B is continuously trying to reach to service A to get the data. And sooner or later, service B is going to run out of resources because all of the service B resources are going to be exhausted, trying to reach to service A, which is not available anymore. So sooner or later, service B will not become available, as well as service A. And to give an example on this, let's assume that our services are built on Azure App Service. And if you have used Azure App Service to implement a service that calls another service, you may come across SNAP port allocation or SNAP port exhaustion terms. And what it means that each Azure App Service has a defined set of SNAP ports that it can use to reach out to other services. Now back to our example. SNAP ports for service B is going to be fully allocated, try to reach to service A, which is not available anymore. The only thing that's going to release these SNAP ports is when the timeout has expired. And even though when it happens, it's going to be reallocated by the requests that service B is continuously sent to service A. So bottom line is, these SNAP ports are going to be allocated at all times, and service B is not going to be available. And similarly, service C is not going to be available as well. And this is the first scenario that we are talking about here. Now let's talk about a different scenario. Let's assume we have a service, let's call it service X, and we have a different clients sending requests to service X. However, one of these clients is sending an overwhelming number of requests to service X. 
and other clients are sending a standard number of requests. What we are going to see is that Service X resources are going to be busy performing the requests coming from this particular client, and it's going to affect Service X availability to perform the requests coming from other clients. And this is the second scenario that we are talking about here. One particular client is sending overwhelming number of requests that affects other clients to perform their requests. What we are going to do here is implement a connection pool in service C. This connection pool is going to be allocated a particular number of SNAT ports. And this connection pool is going to be dedicated for all communications with service B. And similarly, we are going to implement a connection pool in service B that's responsible for all communication with service A. And as well, we are going to allocate a particular number of SNAT ports for this connection pool. Now, when service A is down or become unavailable, all of the connection, all of the SNAT ports been allocated in the service A connection pool are going to be allocated trying to reach to service A, which is not available anymore, leaving the rest of service B as not ports and resources free to perform other operations that service B needs to perform. So this is our bulkhead that stops the damage in this situation. Now let's see another example. Let's say that the external clients are sending requests to service A, as well as internal system calls coming from service B. And the external clients are sending an overwhelming number of requests to service A compared to the requests that service B is sending. And what's going to happen is that service A is going to be really busy to perform the requests coming from the external clients, and it might affect service A availability to perform the internal system calls coming from service B. And what we need to do in this situation is to implement a container that's dedicated to perform the requests coming from the external clients and have another container that's dedicated to perform the internal system calls coming from service B. And when we receive an overwhelming number of requests from the external clients, we can scale the containers up as much as we like to perform these requests. Now let's take it to the next level. Let's say that the external clients are launching a DDoS attack on our service, and that attack has successfully passed through your security defenses and firewalls. And what's going to happen in here is that it's going to affect the container that's been dedicated to receive the external client requests, leaving the other container up and running to be able to receive the internal system calls coming from service B. This is how we can use the bulkhead to stop that damage and to allow service A to isolate different workloads coming from different clients. Now let's go to the second example. We have the different clients sending a different number of requests to service X. And I'm sure you will get it right. We will create different container for each client workload to make sure that they are going to be separate from each other. And if one client sending overwhelming number of requests to service X, we can easily scale up the container that's been dedicated for that client and leaving other containers able to perform other clients' requests. And on the other side, if one of the clients is performing a DDoS attack against our service, it's going to affect only one container that's dedicated for that particular client leaving other containers up and running to perform other client requests. This is how to use the bulk hit pattern to stop the damage in your solution. Now let's see some considerations you need to keep in mind when implementing this pattern. First of all, the level of isolation. How deep do you wanna go in your isolation? Are you going to create a separate container for each client or are you going to organize them differently? You need to combine the business requirement with the technical requirement in this area to make sure that you are putting the right level of isolation into your solution architecture. Also, I mentioned before that you may be able to use retry or circuit breaker or throttling patterns and combine them with, this, with the bulkhead pattern. 
In this example here, if we implemented the circuit breaker pattern in service B, that's stop service B from calling or sending any more requests to service A as soon as service A becomes unavailable. This could be one of the ways to stop the damage as well. Also, if you are using Azure API Management or Functions app, you should be able to specify the throttling limit that each client is able to send to your service or your API. As we mentioned, the connection pool, you need to consider process or threads pool as well, also using separate VMs or container or processes for different workloads, and getting to the asynchronous communication, which is really interesting. If we use the message queue in between to loosely couple between service B and service A, then service B just sending the requests to the message queue, and it doesn't matter if service A is up or down. Service B, it's not gonna be affected by the availability of service A, and this is one of the values of introducing the asynchronous communication in this kind of requests. Also, level of granularity, it ties well with the level of isolation, thinking of the business requirement and the technical requirement, finally getting to the monitoring to monitor all of these different uh, partitions or isolations you have defined for your solution. Now let's see when you should implement this pattern. When you want to isolate resources used to consume the backend services. Also when you have a different tiers of consumers, critical, standard, and free, and you have to do some level of isolation between these tiers. Also, when you want to protect your application from cascading failure or dominoes effect. Now let's see when you shouldn't use this pattern. When it's not required to have that level of isolation between different consumer tiers, it's not a business requirement for you, then you shouldn't implement it. Also, you need to avoid the added complexity if it's not necessary. As I said before, you should always aim for simplicity over just following or implementing a particular pattern. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I hope now it's clear for you what the bulkhead pattern is about, how you can combine it with other patterns, when you should use it, when you shouldn't. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. And thanks for watching.